Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show the common issue that happens with Git as provided by Apple after the yearly macOS upgrade and how to fix it. Every year, Apple has provided a significant update to macOS. This year is no exception. However, each time that happens, Git, along with other utilities provided by Apple's command line developer tools, get messed up in the update. Now, this doesn't happen with the occasional patches throughout the year. For example, going from 10.13.3 to 10.13.4 won't cause any issues. This seems to happen only during the more significant code name changing updates like upgrading from High Sierra 10.13 to Mojave 10.14. Prior to the upgrade, my installed version of Git, which is included with Xcode or via the command line developer tools, worked perfectly fine. Now, post upgrade, I have some issues. Let's check it out. With my terminal open, I still have the Git binary, or at least a symlink, on my system's path. Which Git? Which is located at slash usr slash bin slash git. If Git is located at another location, then you aren't using the Apple provided a Git binary. Now, when I go to check the version of Git installed, Git version, I get an error message like this. I've encountered this error each year that I performed the macOS upgrade. By now, my only surprise is that Apple still hasn't fixed this issue. All right, time for the solution. It's basically reinstall the command line developer tools with this command, sudo space xcode dash select space dash dash install. Actually, the sudo part is optional. macOS will simply prompt you for your credentials before proceeding if you don't use sudo. Now, press enter to continue. Now I'm prompted for my password, which is required to run any command using sudo. After that, you'll be prompted to either get Xcode, not now, or install. Of course, the middle option simply cancels this process. The first option sends you to the Mac App Store to download the latest version of Xcode, which will include the command line developer tools. The last option, install, will just install the command line developers tool part of the Xcode suite. That is the option I normally use since I don't use Xcode and there's no point in downloading a multi gigabyte application I'm not planning to use otherwise. If you want to install everything, go right ahead. You'll get Git and other tools updated that way as well. For everyone else, just click Install to continue. After that, you'll be greeted with a license agreement dialog. Feel free to read it if you so desire. Otherwise, continue by clicking on Agree. Now, the installer will download and reinstall the latest copy of the command line developer tools, compatible with your system. This will likely take several minutes, but I'll speed things up with the magic of video editing. Great. Once complete, click on the Done button. Once back to the terminal, we should be able to check Git's version and not have an error this time. Git space version. Awesome, it looks like we're back in business. Well, this really completes this video, but I wanted to address one other topic while I'm here, since I'm certain someone will ask or point it out. That's regarding alternative ways to install Git. Yes, it is true, you can use package managers like Homebrew or Mac Ports to install Git. However, they have their own issues especially if you do plan to use Xcode at any point. This is why I generally recommend sticking with the flavor of Git provided by Apple. It just keeps things simple. If you already have your favorite package manager and you never plan to use Xcode, or at least you're comfortable overcoming the conflicts, then you can certainly go that route. You are likely to end up with a slightly newer version of Git. 
but not enough to make a meaningful difference in daily work.